Hello everyone. In this video, we will be solving problem 438. Find odd analograms in a string. The problem statement is, we are given two strings, S and P. We need to return an array of all the starting indices of P's analogram in S. We can return the answer in any order. If you don't know what analogram is, it is a word or a phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase. Typically, using all of the original letters exactly once. If you are still not clear what analogram is, let's look at example number one and understand it. Here we are given two strings S and P. P contains A, B, C and in S we have a bunch of letters. And between P and S we need to find out if we have a set of consecutive letters which is an analogram of A, B, C. So if you look at the first three characters of S, we have C, B and A which is an analogram of A, B and C. So if I arrange it in a different way, I can get the string P. Hence, C, B, A becomes an analogram of A, B and C. Similarly, at index 6, we have B, A, C which is again an analogram of A, B, C. It's just arranged in a different way. Because we have two analograms in this S input, we are returning two indices as an output, 0 and 6. We need to return the starting index from where the analogram can be formed. This problem can be solved using multiple ways. I'll be talking about two such ways where we'll start with a simpler solution and in the second solution, we'll try to optimize our approach and get a better time complexity. Now, without wasting any time, let's switch to whiteboard. Let's talk through the simple solution. So the simplest way to find if two strings are analograms of each other is to order by ascending or descending and then compare if the two strings are equal or not. If the two strings are equal, it means it's an analogram or else it will return false. For example, if I have one text as ABC and the other one is PAC, if I apply the order by operation on that, on the left hand side, I will get ABC and on the right hand side, I will get ABC. And because the two are equal, they both are analograms. But let's say if I have an input of AABC on the left hand side and on the right hand side, I just have BAC, my order by would give me AABC on the left and on the right, I will still have ABC, which are not equal. And we can say it is not an analogram. To solve this problem using a simpler approach, we can use the sort by approach to compare the strings. Let me give you a couple of examples. Because the length of P is 3, the substring that I will be doing on the string S also needs to have 3 characters. So I will start with checking the first 3 characters. So my pointer is going to point at 0. I will get the first 3 characters. C, B, A, apply sorting which will give me A, B and C and then I will compare it the P string. So for P, I only need to do an order by once because it is a constant string. So after, after apply sorting, I will get A, B and C. Compare these two strings. If the result is true, I can say this is an analogram. So I will record this index i in my result and once this comparison is done i will then increment my i pointer to one so my new string will be b a e do the same operation after sorting i will get a b and e again continue the comparison check it with p and if i find the the two strings are equal add it to the result now with this solution Definitely a time complexity is going to be huge because we are ordering or sorting the string at each index, thus exponentially increasing our time complexity. If you look at the two examples that we took just now, the first one was C, B and A and the second one was B, A and E. And if you compare the two strings, B and A was repeated. So we are processing these two characters multiple times between the two iterations. If I add one more character over here and if I continue the iteration 
for a e and b i will be using this character a thrice we need to think about how we can minimize the calculations of these repeated characters and simplify the logic to simplify the solution and improve our time complexity one approach is rather than doing a sorting use a dictionary and record the number of characters being that are appearing and the count for example if i want to map the string p into a dictionary my dictionary would look something like this on the left hand side i will add the characters and on the right hand side i will have the count a appeared once b appeared once and c appeared once now all i need to do is build another table or another dictionary with the same columns left hand side would be the characters and right hand side would be the count and compare the two dictionaries if they have the right number of characters with the right count the two strings are analograms and we will return true or we will add the index in the result variable now that this part is clear let's talk about how we can reduce the duplicate calculation that we were doing earlier let's take the first three characters now if i'm processing it via this dictionary option i will have c as one b as one and a as one and continue the comparison if the entry exists and the count matches it means it's an analogram let's say i complete the iteration with this input now i need to take the next character which is e instead of doing a fresh iteration from b to e what we can do is remove the first character from the previous one and only add the last character or the new character that we are adding in my iteration i will check the first character in the previous word which is c so i will reduce the count of c in my dictionary so c will become zero and i will add a new value for e set the count as one once the new string is added to the dictionary compare it with the p dictionary and verify let's take another example after e the next character is b so if i'm adding b here just like before we will take the first character of the previous string which is this b and remove it so i will set this b's count to zero the new character that i am adding is also b compare it with the p dictionary and confirm the value so with this approach we have considerably reduced the duplicate calculation that we are doing only working with two characters at a time the new character that is being added and the old character that needs to be removed with this solution our time complexity is o of n is equals to the string length of s and our space complexity is whatever is the size of this dictionary now if you think about the worst case scenario this dictionary has the key alphabets and based on the given constraints that we can have the string with only a to z characters small case so the length cannot go more than 26 so our space complexity is constant space of one now let me show you how this solution can be implemented using c sharp so here is my c sharp solution in the main method i have initialized this return value variable which is of type length of int which will hold all of the indexes from where analograms are beginning from string s then i have a validation to check if the string s is not empty p is not empty and the length of s needs to be greater than or equal to p dot length if the length of s is small then it won't have enough characters to build an analogram the next step is i'm calling this helper method parse string to map which will convert string to a dictionary of type character and integer so i'm passing p and in the next line i am calling the same method but passing the substring of s starting from zero to the length of p so it will get me the first three characters based on the example that we talked about earlier the next step is to compare the first two maps that we built so the p dictionary 
and the first set of characters from S. If the two dictionaries are equal, we will add the index 0 to the return value variable. The next step is to start the for loop. In the for loop, I am extracting the next character that we need to add to the current string. This first pointer variable will hold the pointer for the character that needs to be removed. In this section, I am removing that character from my S dictionary. So I am decrementing the count of that character in S dictionary. And if the count is equals to zero, it means there are no more characters left in the string. So I am removing that completely from the S string. This will reduce the number of iterations that I have to go through when I am doing the comparison between the two dictionaries. After this, the next step is to add the new character which we identified on line 23. So I am checking if the character exists in the dictionary. If it exists, then I, I just need to increment the count. And if it does not exist, then I am adding a new entry with the count 1. And after that, I am calling this compare method again, passing the status of P dictionary and S dictionary. And if the two dictionaries match, then I am adding the index of I minus P length plus 1. Because my I right now is pointing at the last character of the substring. So I need to retrace my steps back and calculate the starting index of the string. Hence, I am doing I minus P of length plus 1. After this is complete, I am incrementing my first pointer because now in the next iteration, I need to remove the next character. After the whole for each loop is complete, I will have all the right indexes added to this return value variable and I am returning it on line 55. One helper method that I am using is compare which accepts two dictionary. It will iterate through one of the dictionaries and compare if the key exists in the next dictionary and the count also matches. If either of the condition is not met, it will return false. After the for each loop is complete and all of the conditions are satisfied, I will return true. The other helper method that I have is this parse string to map, which accepts string, iterates through all of the characters in the string and adds it to this dictionary variable. If the character already exists, it will increment the count. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you were able to understand my explanation. If you have any questions, concerns or comments, feel free to reach out to me. This source code is available on my GitHub repository and the link is there in the description below. Feel free to check that out and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.